as I said, having been a tenor singer when I was young, <clears throat> A's above middle C were real easy, and that's pretty high for the average guy. And high C's wasn't a great chore. But when you get in your 70s, you lose your range, you lose your vibrato, and you get old. That's the way it works. The best singers get old, and that's what happens. Mary found that we, she used to like Gary Puck in the Union Gap. He sang pretty, real pretty singer. And uh, remember him? Yep. Gary Puckett. He sang Young Girl and Woman, Woman, and real beautiful tenor singer. And she found a DVD of him. Whew, it was awful. <laughs> he had lost his pitch. He'd lost his range. He had dropped everything about three steps, and it was like, he was singing in a high school or something, had the thing sparsely full, and he used to draw big coliseums full of people. And it was awful. And those guys just don't get it. Don't you know, mister? Quit when you can't do it no more. But they keep dreaming these dreams that they're going to be as big as they used to be, and they're not. Once it's over, it's over. That's what the music world's about. You had your run, get out. But they, but they don't. They keep going. It's funny. All right. We always, when we meet, doesn't look like we have a lot of listeners, but we are on the internet 24 hours a day, all over the world. Anywhere in the world you got internet service, you can watch us Sunday morning at 11, Sunday night, Wednesday night at 7. And we also have about 400. Uh, messages and our archived messages and you can watch any number of those and read all the articles that I've written wherever you are in the world. We get calls from Japan and Ireland and Netherlands or Holland and uh, South America and Africa and then we're on TV in two, 200 towns and cities across America including Los Angeles, San Diego, New York City uh, all five boroughs in New York City and up in Minneapolis and down in, in Washington, D.C. And, and Atlanta and Dayton and Ohio and Council Bluffs, Iowa and Des Moines, Iowa and, and uh, oh gosh, so many. Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Beaumont, San Antonio, Austin, Waco, Texas. The uh, list goes on and on. Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Tucson, Arizona, so forth. These are people that write to us. Some are regular in their writings. And Rodney Miller writes to us from Garland, Texas. Hello again. I was studying and realized that I, had, that I need some additional resources. I remember that Jim mentioned a resource that stated the number of times a word was used in Scripture and its location in Scripture. Can you send me the name of that source? I can show it to you right here. If you look up a word in your Strong's Concordance, when you look up the number, you look up the number in this. When you look up the number here, this is a word study concordance, or you can get an Englishman's lexicon, and it'll tell you every time that word is used in the Bible. Like here, I just opened up to Creo, which is the word hath anointed. It's mentioned five times, and uh, gives you the verses and what the words are in the English, and then... Charisma, which is the derivative of the word creo, tells you how many times it's mentioned, and that's three times. And in one spot, it's the word unction. The next time, it's anointing. But it's the same word, charisma. And, this, and then it's also derivative of the, West, of the word cresta, crestates, and that's mentioned ten times. And it'll give you the Strong's number here on the right. And that comes from the word crestos, and that's the word easy or goodness, goodness of God leads to repentance, and kind, be kind one to another, means to be useful. And this is a magnificent. And then that comes from the word kriya, which is the word need. And that's a, all these are derivatives. This is derivative of the word kreomai, which uh, means use or useful or seeing we have such hope we use. We use great plainness of speech. The word use and the word anoint are derivatives. They are morphemes. Morph comes from morphe, meaning to shape. They come from the same shapes of words. Magnificent book. 
I use this about third in my studies. I use my Bible first, my concordance second, this third, and then I go into my other word study books and my encyclopedias in my library at home. Great, great book. Word study concordance. And this, but these don't, they don't print these anymore, so you may not be able to get one of these. You can get it used online. But this is by George Wigram and Ralph D. Winter. They're worth their weight in gold. I mean, I, if you notice, every time I unload my books, I put this out here because I never know. I carry this in back and forth at all times with me everywhere I go. I don't know when I'm going to need one. So that's what that is. That's what they're talking about. Also, I need a good parsing guide that I can understand. Parsing guide. You can't understand it until you learn the Greek alphabet. Then you understand it. But it's, hard, it's easy to learn. I'll show you how to learn in. Uh, <clears throat> I'll teach that to you. In fact, when you come over to the house on Friday night to package DVDs and we all eat together, anybody who needs to learn these kinds of things, I'll take you aside, take you up to the board I've got over there and go through it with you. And then uh, parsing guide is nothing but an analytical lexicon. Lexicon means dictionary. And uh, I've got one up here. And I suggest Mr. Mounts's. This is a Harper's. This is an old one. You can pick some of these up and use stores. But you have to look the word up in the Greek. And it'll tell you if it's accusative or singular feminine here. Emain. Accusative means direct object, singular, feminine gender. So they're not hard, but you've got to know what the parts of speech are. Once you learn this, then you've got to get you a first-year Greek student's book so you can look up what accusative voice or dative, accusative case or dative case, middle voice, and so forth. It's not hard. Uh, the only reason people think Greek is hard because they go to seminary and they go, oh, gosh, I got that Greek class. And, and when they get through it, they go, Phew. oh, man, I'm glad I never have to go in there again. It's not that hard. Besides that, our, our alphabet comes from alpha, beta. Oops, I knocked something down. So, and their alphabet is basically our alphabet. It's not like it's extremely difficult. It's not. All right. That looks like that's going to fall sometimes during the night. All right. Get George Mounts, M-O-U-N-C-E, analytical lexicon. Um, that's what I suggest. Um, all the parsing guides. Parse means to divide a sentence up into its parts of speech, the subject, the verb, the predicate, the direct object, the participles, the nouns, the gerunds, and so forth. Uh, I've had people call me and say they want a Parsons guide, since I'm the Parson, I guess. <clears throat> I am Parson Brown, right, Karen? Uh, all the Parson, that's what my daughter-in-law calls me, Parson Brown. Uh, all the Parson guides I see are totally written in Greek, does a guide exist in English? <laughs> no. <laughs> At least enough English so I can follow it. Call me and I'll go through the alphabet with you. It's very simple. If so, what is the name of it? If not, can I get some advice on how to use the Greek one? Yes, I just told you some of it. And I'll keep advising you on it. Uh, we love you, Brother Rodney. And Dylan Winston, or Winston Dylan, from Book of New York. And she writes to us all the time. He writes to us all the time. Dear Sister Mary, this is Brother Winston Dillon from Brooklyn, New York. Thank you for the last sets of DVDs teaching on Revelation. We've got a four and a half years on Revelation on Sunday night. That's 270 some odd uh, tapes. We went through every culture, custom, idiom, metaphor, all the major words in every verse. Uh, I've never heard a study like that. And it will just knock your head off when you watch it. Not because it's me, but I have spent that much time studying every verse, every word, every culture. Most of your answers to Revelation are in the Old Testament. And that's a fact. Not in current technology, not helicopters and nuclear warheads. That's ridiculous. Thank God I am finally understanding the book of Revelation through Pastor Jim's explanation. I am so 
excited about the DVDs. The last shipment you sent is 1677. Can you now send me the next shipment so that I can continue the studies on this great book? Mary does, Mary or the guys, Tom and company, they will only send you three special DVDs at a time because we've got so many people asking for DVDs around the world. I have mailed out a donation to the ministries, which you shall receive in a couple of days. Thank you so very much as I continue to pray for you and the team for the work you're doing. I'm glad to be linked up with Grace and Truth Ministries, Agape Brother Dylan. We love you, Winston. And uh, Shell Hilvers from Cleves, Ohio, outside of Cincinnati. She saw us years ago on Cincinnati TV. <clears throat> Hello, Jim, Mary, and all the elect. Jim, I've been wondering if you could help me understand a little better the office of Christ. It's the name. It's in the name Onoma. Of course, Onoma means authority. The authority and the character of Jehovah. And when I look up the name in the theological word book of the Old Testament, both names, Jehovah and Jesus, take me to 484. So they all lead to the des des designation of Jehovah's salvation. Of course, Jehovah means self-existence. Self-existence saves. If you can accept Christ and save yourself by a prayer, that makes you Jehovah. Then I am led to find that Christ means anointed. When I understand these two words together, what they say is Jehovah's salvation to the anointed. Is it correct? Of course, we're anointed with truth. John, 1 John 2, 27. Truth, alatheis, means to take the cover off. Is it correct that when I read... For instance, Mark 1, 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it, could, it should be translated the beginning of the gospel of Jehovah's salvation to the anointed. Well, not exactly. God wrote it the way he wanted to, okay? And all the reference to Jesus Christ to be in this way, I don't really fully understand your question. Uh, I can define Jehovah for you and define Christ and, define, and go to all the morphemes of the words and define gospel, gospel euangelizo. Preach the gospel, you angelizo. We got a word evangelist from there. Well, the well message. And how many have, times have I preached on that? Bunch, right? James Ward, Demopolis, Alabama. I guess he heard us on radio down there. I'm not sure. Jim, I received today the DVDs concerning the Holy Spirit and Trinity. Thank you. I look forward to a deeper personal study of the subject, which... I've been meaning to do for several months now. Best wishes. I will mail a food pantry package to you this weekend. He, we get packages from him in the mail. It's got canned foods in it, you know. It's an envelope. It comes in an envelope. That's good, James. Thank you, James. We love you. Uh, this is from... Uh... This is somebody don't like what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know who Billy Bob Beamer is. Do y'all? Uh, I don't know either. Uh, seriously, if God has done, will do all these things, if all is predetermined, where is the worship? Proskuneo. It is bowing to what God has willed. That's what it is. It means to bow to. It has a basic same meaning as prayer. It means to will forward or it means uh, to lie down and lick the hand and say whatever you'd have me to have. It's bowing to God's will. The honor to give. Where's even the need to worship? Good grief, this guy didn't know anything. I know God commands us Christians to pray and thus we do regardless of whether or not we receive the outcome. <laughs> prayer don't mean to ask for something and get it. Prayer, prosukumai, pros, toward, you can me, it will. It means to will oneself towards the will of another. It means to bow to the will of God. It doesn't mean I want to get the outcome. Gosh, some people don't watch me very long, do they? But having studied your work for several years, boy, you hadn't looked close. I have come to the conclusion that the God, that the God, the Father, Abba, Daddy, that Jesus spoke of, is not this God, perhaps the Gnostics will write about a demiurge, which is the God that created all things in the beginning, among the pagans. What do you call his acts? The acts are not evil because God did them. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Argue with him. 
All in all, the God I worship today does not sound like your God. He's probably not. I worship the God of the Bible. If you don't believe God creates evil, you don't believe God. If you don't believe God works all things after the counsel of his own will, if you don't believe he's declared the end from the beginning and from ancient times, everything that's not yet done, you don't serve the God I serve. You call your God Jehovah, but he is not the God of the Bible. And keep in mind, the potter does not destroy his clay. Usually he reworks it. Puts a whole new slant on Romans 8. Thou art the potter, we are the clay, and we are all the works of thy hands. Vessels, he's got vessels of mercy that he makes out of the clay, and he's got vessels of wrath that he makes out of the clay. Hath not the potter power of the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor Jacob and another to dishonor Esau, if that's what he wants to do? That's exactly right. I respect your right to believe this way. But it is a path I can't follow, then you don't follow the God of the Bible. I care too much about my fellow humans. What, vessels of wrath? God doesn't love them. He loved his wife, the church, that's all. Regardless of who they are or what they have done, are you talking about vessels of mercy? Regardless of what they've done, that's who I care about. But I don't care about the vessels of wrath. God hates all workers of iniquity, and he loved Jacob and hated Esau before either one were born. I didn't say that. Paul said that in Romans 9, 13. For either one had done any good or evil. I think we must learn to forgive all things. <laughs> if your brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. You don't, you don't forgive. There's no such thing as free forgiveness. We have to repent, but we have to be rebuked first, and God has to touch our hearts. Regardless of who they are, gosh, this guy's ignorant. How could he have been following me for several years? I think we must learn to forgive all things. Very difficult. As God hath forgiven us, he didn't forgive us without repentance. And it's the goodness of God. That word krestoptos I just read out of the... That, that means to be useful to us. That's what leads to repentance. Oh, me. Uh, since he made us of dust, since he must have created the inclination in us to sin. If not, who? So... He knows our frame, our DNA. I think he will show mercy at some point, but we'll, be, we'll also be perfect judge. I just can't agree any longer. I would worship, I would fellowship, but know you, I know you speak against that. So I will say goodbye. Bye. He didn't watch in several years, and that's all he comes up with. Nelson Brady, Spring Hill, Tennessee. For the last three weeks, we haven't been able to get Grace and Truth broadcast. Have you stopped broadcasting live streaming over the Internet? We watch every broadcast. Are we fixed, guys? Okay. Hi. Hi, Nelson. Come see us. Uh, I think some of these that get mad at me and don't like what I'm saying, they're, they're kind of funny and entertaining. Lawrence Foster. That's a, is Lawrence here? Don't see him. Uh, this is a YouTube comment. He puts this on YouTube. Uh, this was Jason and Summer's wedding. Somebody commented on this. This is the best wedding I've attended via Internet ever. It's probably the best wedding I've seen. I pray that this isn't the last wedding you join together of the elect. Praise God. Well, somebody liked it, didn't they? And then Ray Lehman, Zeno Ohio, Jim Marion Church. Hello, just want to say thanks again for the CDs. It means DVDs. And thank everyone who puts hard work to make them also, I hope. Harold Brown, one more of these emails. Harold Brown's been listening to us a long time. He's down in Louisiana. Uh, the Old Testament is our history book. It is not our law book. Well, yes, it is. All the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. There's not two or three laws. There's one law. The cross of Christ that saves us also commands us how to live. Not without the word of God interjecting that. Paul's way was not to impose the Mosaic law on them. The Mosaic law is imposed on all of us. It was Paul that told the Corinthians and the Galatians, do we make void the law by faith? Yea, we establish the law. The only thing that was done away with was the rituals that... Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances was contrary to us. Took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Only the rituals 
Can you go out and kill? Thou shalt not kill. Exodus, the 20th chapter. Can you have another God before you? Exodus, 20th chapter. That's where you find the Ten Commandments. Was the Ten Commandments done away with? Are there priests and kings? Are we the temple of God? Are we, is our hearts the Ark of the Covenant? Didn't he sprinkle our hearts? Wasn't the Ark of the Covenant sprinkled? Yes. But to emphasize the law of Christ, to insist that the gospel which has brought them salvation had ethical implications, and to spell out in detail what these implications were, he's trying to sit here and say, we don't have any ethical implications of the law. That's not true. I'm not going to finish. Harold... He's fought me and argued with me for the last 10 years. I, why do you do that? You don't know what you're doing. The law is still here. Everything in the Old Testament was a shadow. The New Testament was the very image. Good grief. And uh, he's fought me along the way. I don't fight him. I just let him go on his way. Daryl Smith, Greensboro, North Carolina, called. Uh, Benny Watson, Waco, Texas. Uh, Gadon D. Wade from Bronx, New York. He watches on TV up there. I've got a bunch of letters. I'm not even able to read all these. I don't even know how to get to all of them. Uh, got a letter from uh, Davis Benef Bonafonte in, in uh, Buford, Georgia. Uh, John Williams, Bethany, Oklahoma. I wish I could read them all. Michael Nietzsche, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Sherry Johnson, Tucson, Arizona. Uh, Erlanda Jamat, Brooklyn, New York. Philip Quatrasi, Staten Island. Uh, Judith Thomas, Lancaster, Ohio. Deborah Johnson, Madison, Tennessee. And uh, let me see here. Got somebody. I don't know who that is. Oh. Donovan France down in Metairie, Louisiana. I also got a call from Jennifer Hoffman. She said, I already watched your statement of faith aboard Dominic Duponchet's DVDs. And she said uh, she wants to be on the list to get everything. Gerald Hewlett uh, from Washington, D.C. loves the message. And that'll be enough. I can't get to all of them. Too many, too much stuff. All, all these phone calls from all over the country. Uh, I just can't get to them all. I'm sorry. Uh, that those I, I could do like the charismatics do and lay my hands up on them and start praying. Couldn't I? Huh? And it's like Bob Tilton. Bob Hilton got exposed by current affair, and they found out that he wasn't uh, opening, he just op had somebody open the letters that he was getting to his ministry there in Dallas. Of course, it's not a ministry, it's a show. It's a circus. And uh, he was having somebody else open the letters, and uh, they found a whole bunch of letters stuffed in garbage cans back behind his ministry building, and uh, they hadn't just got the money out and threw them away. Then he was accused by the current affair people that he wasn't praying over him like he promised he would. And he said he went out into the alley and laid on those letters and prayed so long over those letters as he was laying on them that the ink in the letters got through his clothes and came into his body and gave him blood poison. <laughs> he didn't die. What a crook. If you listen to Bob Tilton one time, that's your fault. He didn't die because of his faith. Oh, yes. Bob was, he was something else. I mean, is it, can you imagine how many guys that lay on newspapers down here on Skid Row, how many of those are getting bud poisoned? And they do it for years. There has been an epidemic of bums and winos on Music Row dying of bud poison from laying on papers. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be a sucker to believe Bob. Bob is a case, isn't he? Whew, he is such an embarrassment to the charismatic movement, even TVN won't have him on. And that's the truth. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> that's funny. He's funny. 
I, in fact, when Current Affair exposed him, they went around all of his houses. He has a, like a $15 million house on the ocean down in Miami and uh, had all of these homes and just unbelievable how he lived. Of course, Kenneth Copeland, Fred Price, T.D. Jakes, they all live that way. They're crooks. They belong in prison, all of them, stealing from the poor people. All right. <clears throat> Remember our TV in Nashville. It's Monday night at 10, Saturday night at 10, Channel 176, Comcast. Wednesday morning and Friday morning at midnight on Comcast, Channel 176, and Thursday night at on Channel 49 at 11 o'clock on Comcast. And then if you live in Hendersonville on Tuesday evening at 5, Thursday night at 7 for a full hour and a half. Most of these are hour and a half programs. And then uh, we're on radio every Saturday morning. And if you've got friends around the country, we want all over the country, tell them about the Internet. They can watch us any time around the clock. And uh, I want to remind you of our needy people. We don't suck the life out of the needy, we give to the needy. We've got people that believe the truth, that love the truth, that come to grace and truth. Some want to get here, they have a hard time getting here because they don't have gasoline. I always give them a food card, a card where they can buy gas. Uh, and we take, we have a, uh, we have a food pantry at, down in the ministry kitchen downstairs of our house. And uh, that's for the needy that come to grace and truth. This is the needy <laughs> believers of truth. We don't believe in giving people food unless they are into truth. If they are rebellious against truth, we don't believe in... The Bible says we're to communicate unto people who teach in all good things. People who love the truth, that's who we're supposed to go to. We're not to be fellowshipping with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather we're to reprove them. We're to separate from the world. Now, we do help a lot of people around the country, but they're believers. We've got several ladies that make anywhere from four hundred and eighty to thousand dollars, eleven hundred dollars a month. Some make six hundred, six seventy, and what we do is we send them food cards each month. Well, they're actually just Mastercards or uh, or uh, Mastercards or Visa cards or Walmart cards. They could use them to buy gas. They can use them to get food and other toiletries and things you know that they need. So. Be sure and help take care of our needy. If all you can do is buy a $25 card once a month or a $50 card or a three or four of them and God's been good to you, this is 100% for the downtrodden people who can't hardly live. These charismatics are sucking the life out of the poor, taking their last dollar. We don't believe in doing that to widow ladies. People say, why do you hate them people so much? I despise anybody who cheats widows out of their money. And that's what they do. They take from the very last dollar from widows and orphans. That's the great indictment against Israel when they were in the Old Testament. And uh, remember our missionaries down in, in uh, Ecuador, Steve and, and Scott Worry. They're down there. They're brothers. They, they've gone down there. They've, their wives are with them. They're having babies down there. And they're out there fighting the natives and the Catholic Church and... And Roman Catholicism in the, in the uh, Spanish-speaking countries is very dangerous. They threaten your life. They, uh, their lives is being threatened by the natives there. And they're preaching predestination. God doesn't love everybody. Christmas is pagan. Easter is pagan. Death to self. Daily cross. Self-denial. Suffering for righteousness sake. They're teaching all these things. And it's the only missionaries I've found I really want to support because they're telling truth to the natives there. And uh, if you want to give to them, you put write a check and put on the bottom mission fund. And immediately when I get a check from the mission fund, if I get it in the mail, I've told you this every time, but I go, I go by the post office every day, go to our post office box, get the mail, and I check all the mail. And if I have anything in there for missionaries, I go right next door to the bank, get a cashier's check, and come back and mail it immediately. If I get a check here, uh, I go right straight to the bank the next day and get and get to the total of, if I get a 25 and a 50 and a $100 check here, I go right there the next day and get a $175 uh, 
cashier's check and mail it directly to their headquarters, which is in Massachusetts, and their father takes care of their funds up there. He said, I can't believe the commitment of my boys. And they are down there preaching to the Ecuadorian natives. And uh, he's our representative. Huh? And he's our representative on TV there in Quincy, Massachusetts. And uh, is there anything I'm forgetting, Mary? All right. And we're glad to have Steve Hughes here. Steve's over here, the young guy over there with the dark shirt. You're young to me. Everybody's young. If you're under 50, you're young. Um, uh, Steve watches us on TV and sees us on the Internet. And I'll go around and meet him after church and tell him we're glad to have him. And uh, anything else? No other guests back here. Y'all were here before. Y'all was here Sunday. Glad to have y'all back. That's Brock and Hazel. And glad you're here. Um, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, Christopher, you want to pray? You don't pray for us? You don't have to learn to pray for long. You want to pray, Jonathan? No, you don't want to, do you? Well, I'll ask my son to pray. Eric, you can pray. Amen. Y'all behave. My papa preaches, okay? Or your daddy will beat you with an inch of your life. You know that, don't you? <laughs> my daddy's sitting there, they'll behave.